Good morning. Welcome to worship with Pioneer United Methodist Church. A special welcome to those of you who are worshiping with us today by live stream or at a later time on YouTube or Facebook. That would be most of you since only the worship leaders, the production team, and Stella's close family are in the sanctuary today. We continue to monitor the seven-day average rate of new cases in our metro area and will return to in-person worship as soon as possible after the transmission rate falls below 25 per 100,000. The rate today is 85 cases per 100,000, up about 40, almost double since last week, and we are in the severe risk zone. Therefore, Pastor Danielle and I have decided not to return to in-person worship before the end of October. Please find ways to connect without touching, do no harm, do good, and stay in love with God and neighbor. Today, we continue a focus on creation Uh, It's the middle, uh, next to last one of five Sundays, part of a three-year cycle. This year, the overarching theme is word, and the topic today is humanity. And today, we will celebrate the baptism of a new little human. I invite you, as you're able, to rise in body and or spirit and join me in the gathering call. Creator God, source of all life, how gloriously does your name resound, echoing to the bounds of the universe. The morning stars sing for joy, and the youngest child cries your name. The weak in the world share, shame the strong, and silence the proud and the rebellious. When I look at the heavens, even the work of your fingers, The moon and the stars, majestic in their courses. The eagle riding the air, the dolphin plowing the sea, the gazelle leaping the wind, the sheep grazing the fells. 
Who are we human beings that you keep us in mind? Children and kindred that you care so much for us. Yet still you bring us to life, creating us after your image, stewards of the planet you give as our home. How awesome a task you entrust to our hands. How fragile and beautiful is the good earth. Creator God, amid the immensities of the universe, you seek us out and call us to be partners in your work of creating. May we not fail you. Please remain standing for Rise, Creator Spirit, Rise. Rise, Creator Spirit, rise from this land across the skies. Rise from deep within this land, move across the desert sand. Rise, create this land anew, make your dreaming song come true. Fill this land with life again, make the desert bloom with rain. Fill this land with life again, make the desert bloom with rain. Rise, Creator Spirit, rise from this land across the skies. Rise from deep in mystery, rise to set your people free. Hear the land cry out in pain, hear her people Span this earth, giving hope and giving birth. Let your rainbow span this earth, giving hope and giving birth. Rise, Creator Spirit, rise from this land across the skies. Rise from deep within the tomb, making Jesus' grave a bloom. Plunging back into your cave, bringing life to every grave. Life that rose with Jesus Christ, rose to fill our hearts and eyes. Life that rose with Jesus Christ, rose to fill our hearts and eyes. Please be seated. Here, come on this way. Friends and siblings in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are made beautiful and sacred by divine grace, recreated by water and the Spirit. All of this is God's gift to us. Freely given in love. Pastor Paul, I present Stella Ramsey. Stella Joy Ramsey for baptism. On behalf of Stella Joy, do you renounce? This is for you guys here. Do you renounce the accusing powers of this world that seek to separate us from God with lies of shame, worthlessness, and failure? We do. 
Do you commit to turning away from corruption and desecration of God's good gifts? Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior and offer yourselves as partners in his ministry of the recreation of the world, trusting in his love and grace and offering that creative love to all people? We do. Will you nurture this child in Christian community that by your prayers, teaching, and example, she may develop a mature spiritual life and become an ordinary means of grace? creating justice, joy, compassion, and peace in all her ways of being in the world. We will. For you, the congregation present here and through the miracle of digital communication, do you, as Christ's body, the church, reclaim your baptismal identity as beloved children of God? Will you nurture one another in Christian community and include this child now before you in your common life? With God's help, we will welcome Stella as she is now and as she grows and becomes with the open arms of Christ. We will surround her with love, forgiveness, poetry, stories, art, and bread and wine. As she learns from us, may we also learn from her that we might be one another's burdens as we learn together the art of Christian life. Let us join with Barry and Danielle in the renewal of the baptismal covenant. Do you believe in God, the source? I believe believe in God, the source, the the first creator, who made and called all creation very good. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, the creative redeemer, who like all of us was conceived in grace, born to human parents, suffered under injustice, died and was grieved by his friends. As we shall too one day, he rose again from the dead, abides with God, and judges us with mercy and love. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe believe in the Holy Spirit, the creative spark who animates the church, connects us to the saints, heals our hurts, resurrects the body, and enlivens forever. This is water from the spring at Camp Wallawa. Let us pray. God is with you and also with you. We give thanks for the deep wisdom of indigenous communities who remind us that water is life. In the beginning, when there was nothing but chaos, formless and void, A creator brooded as a mother over the waters and brought forth light. In the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark through water. After the flood, you set in the clouds a rainbow to remind us of your promise to love and care for all your creation. You led your people from slavery to freedom through the sea, and you led their children to the promised land through the river Jordan. Sing to the Lord, all the earth, tell of God's mercy each day. In the fullness of time, you sent Jesus, nurtured in the water of a womb. He began his ministry soaked by grace in the waters of the Jordan, called beloved child and anointed by your spirit. He called his friends to die to old ways of being and live as people reborn, making the world whole and beautiful again. Declare Declare God's God's works to the nations, God's glory among all the people. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here 
and on this gift of life-giving water. Make this water a blessing to Stella, that she might live a life soaked in grace, one with Christ, who calls her beloved from before her birth until after her death and forevermore. All, All praise to you, beloved, beloved through your child, Jesus Christ, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns forever. Amen. Amen. Stella Joy. Those are does. They remind us of the Holy Spirit. Stella Joy, I baptize you in the name of the Source. In the sign. And the Spirit. Amen. It is our joy to receive our sibling Stella Joy through this holy mystery. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Let us bless Stella. You can raise your hands wherever you are as a sign of your participation in this blessing. May, May these waters forever return you to life, love, and grace. May you come back to them again and again, trusting that in their mercy, nothing at all can ever separate you from the love of Christ. Amen. Amen. For the day, I forgot to recruit a reader, so I get to do it. The first reading is from the Torah, from Genesis 1, verses 24 through 31. Then God said, Earth, bring forth all kinds of living soul, cattle, Things that crawl and wild animals of all kinds. So it was. God made all kinds of wild animals and cattle and everything that crawls on the ground. And God saw that this was good. Let's see. Then God said, let us make humankind in our image to be like us. Let them be stewards of the fish in the sea, the birds of the air, the cattle, the wild animals and everything that crawls on the ground. Humankind was created as God's reflection in the d divine image. God created them female and male. God made them. God blessed them and said, bear fruit. Increase your numbers and fill the earth and be responsible for it. Watch over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and all the living things on the ground. God then told them, look, I give you every seed-bearing plant on the face of the earth and every tree whose fruit carries its seed inside itself. They will be your food. And to all the animals of the earth and the birds of the air and the things that crawl on the ground, everything that has a living soul in it, I give all the green plants for food. So it was. God looked at all of this creation and proclaimed that this was good. Very good. Evening came and morning followed the sixth day. 
This is the testimony of God's love for creation. Thanks be to you, O beloved. second reading this morning is from the early church from Philippians chapter 2 verses 1 through 8. If our life in Christ means anything to you, if love or the spirit that we have in common or any tenderness or sympathy can persuade you at all, then be united in your convictions and united in your love with a common purpose and a common mind. That is the one thing that would make me completely happy. There must be no competition among you, no conceit. But everybody is to be humble. Value others over yourselves. Each of you thinking of the interests of others before your own. Your attitude must be the same as that of Christ Jesus. Christ, though in the image of God, didn't deem equality with God something to be clung to but instead became completely empty and took on the image of oppressed humankind, born into the human condition, found in the likeness of a human being. This is the good news of Christ Jesus. Open our hearts to your spirit, O beloved.
Well, it's nice to finally be here. Here, of course, is an odd thing to say when here is different for most of us. Some of us are likely in our living rooms. Perhaps you're sitting at a dining room table or in front of the computer at your office. But here is still distinctly the right word for where we are. Because we are gathering. We are together. We are worshiping. So I thank you for being here with me, with us today. Let's pray. Oh, gracious God, we give you all the thanks and all the praise for the opportunity to worship together. May you show us how unimaginably special we are, where we fit into this whole creation piece as human beings created in our image, in your image. This morning, may our eyes be open to see what you would have us see and our ears open to hear what you would have us hear. Amen. As you all undoubtedly know by now, if you didn't already, Barry and I recently became parents. And what a wonderful way to start this morning by having her baptized here in our new church community. What a blessing. As Paul mentioned at the beginning of the service, the focus for today's worship service is humanity as a part of God's creation. Now, you've probably heard countless times about the image of God or the Imago Dei in which we are made. Now let me tell you, as I'm sure many of you know, becoming a parent is a fast track way to become educated on humanity. That's for sure. I could go on and on about the things Stella has already taught me about humanity. But as I sat down to think about creation and the word for us this morning, something Barry described to me that happened just after Stella's birth came to mind. Barry got to be the first one to hold baby Stella right after she was born, once the doctors were done with her. And one thing she did immediately was grip his finger with her whole little hand. He told me over and over how strong her grip was and how shocking that was to him. Here she was, earth sighed for mere seconds, and she had a strong grip on him, unwilling to let go. It's amazing, isn't it? That even the littlest of babies can have strength as soon as they are born into this world. I am, of course, as her mother, constantly amazed by the ways in which this baby is strong and fierce, perhaps at times that aren't convenient, like three in the morning, Yet at the same time, despite my awe at my child's strength, I am acutely aware, especially at 3 a.m., just how much she needs her parents to survive. As strong as she is, her grip on its own can't mix up her bottles and feed her. She cannot hold herself the way she needs to be held. She needs so much, despite her unbelievable strength. This image, this dichotomy, 
came to me over and over again as I thought about humanity in the face of God and God's creation. This speaks to our utter strength and simultaneous utter helplessness. Now, I don't mean to degrade us as humans. You'll never hear me downplaying our strength. Just like Barry was overcome by Stella's grip, so I too marvel at the strength of the human will and spirit. This is surely an imprint of the divine, the image of God inside each and every one of us. Our text for today says, Humankind was created as God's reflection. In the divine image, God created them. Father Richard Rohr once said, Whatever you call it, the image of God is absolute and unchanging. There is nothing humans can do to increase or decrease it. And it is not up to us to decide who has or does not have it. And that has mostly been our problem up until now. It is pure and total gift given equally to all. You see, we are endowed with the imprint of our creator. From the very beginning, scripture makes this clear. And it is good. God calls it good. God calls it very good. God calls us very good. And yet, and yet, and yet, Are we not also greatly in need of God's grace? Are we not also totally dependent on God's guidance and gifts? Aren't we all a bit like baby Stella, grasping our way through this world, holding on to the fingers of someone stronger than us? And we are strong enough, smart enough even, to know not to let go. We can do that much. We can accept the love that is given to us so freely. We can grow into our strength the way children grow into themselves. Because that unchangeable image of God is always doing its best to shine through. Now that is all well and good to know. A nice metaphor, perhaps, because everyone loves a baby. And everyone loves hearing about the baby, even in the sermon. But the message for this morning goes beyond a good metaphor. Because this unchangeable image of God calls us to something. It calls us to action. It calls us to find ourselves and our place in the midst of God's great creation. We have to remember our place in creation as ones made in the image of God. This place we have, this responsibility we have, is given to all of us. All humans have the ability to participate in creation. That is our call this morning. It is an open call. 
a vast expanse of possibility. Because creation looks like so many different things. But undoubtedly, this is our place as co-creators together with God. We create so many things as we go through our lives. This can be more nuanced and abstract, like the idea that we create love when we are in community with one another. This can be specific and visceral, like giving birth to children. There is no one size fits all when it comes to our participation in creation. We're all different after all. And those differences come shining through when we participate in our creative acts which is why this co-creation is so full of possibility. Psychiatrist and Holocaust survivor Viktor Frankl, in his reflection on his experiences inside a concentration camp, says this of our uniqueness and strength. This uniqueness and singleness which distinguishes each individual and gives meaning to their existence has a bearing on creativity just as much as it does on human love. When the impossibility of replacing a person is realized, it allows the responsibility which a person has for their existence to appear in all its magnitude. Did you catch that? He says, the impossibility of replacing a person, meaning no one can be replaced. Not me, not you. We, the bearers of the divine image, are irreplaceable and unimaginably special. That is perhaps one reason God calls us good. Because we are all made in God's image, and that image is uniquely reflected in each and every person. Now I've mentioned that this can look like a bunch of different things. And even the way we serve our community as a church can be a way we channel the divine creative spark in us. In fact, there has never been a time that the church has been called to more creativity than right now. Some of us may grow discouraged as attendance at mainline churches across America seems to decline, wondering if this is the end of ministry as we knew it. And you know what? Perhaps it is. Perhaps it is the end of ministry as we knew it. But that doesn't mean it is the end of ministry. It doesn't mean it isn't going to grow and change into something beautiful and, yes, different. We just need to use the creativity God has endowed us with to transform. Just like baby Stella, we are strong and we are also in need of great help. We have unimaginable potential, boundless possibility, but we need God's help to access that potential. And with God's help, 
We become co-creators. God always acts first. God acts in the story today by creating humankind, then invites humankind to respond by filling the planet, caring for it, and participating in the caretaking of creation. We are, in a way, helpless without God's initiative. But rest assured, God is always acting to strengthen and empower us. It's not one or the other. You can be strong and still in need of help at the same time. We can be simultaneously powerful and helpless. Remember, That image of God is unchangeable. The divine imprint cannot be erased no matter what we do. And so we should respond. We should respond to God's help by joining in the acts of creation. Whether that is community service, raising children, or making art. All of it is participating in creation, and we are called to it. Individually and communally, we are called to participate. And isn't that just the most exciting piece of all? Now, you may have heard the rumors, and the rumors are true that I do this little thing called slam poetry. So this morning, I thought, as we get to know each other as human beings, as fellow people made in the image of God, that this would help you get to know me. This is a poem about creation and our place in it as beings made in the image of God. If you've never heard slam poetry before, that's all right. You don't need to know anything about it to experience it. This poem is called Let the Birds Fly. When I was just the size of a pinky finger, with eight or nine years to call my own, I started writing stories about talking dogs and the color of the sky. When I was 15, I learned what writing a poem feels like, that it feels like making something, and you know I was never good with my hands, with needle and thread, with watercolors or guitar notes. So what else? Could I do? When I learned that you could make art with your words, when I learned the power of letting pieces of my heart out for others to see, I learned that it is in our nature to participate in creation. When God said, be fruitful and multiply, God wasn't just talking about children. Way back then, God planted these stories, these words, this poem in my heart and something like it in yours. See, creation is sometimes found under a microscope in a Petri dish. Sometimes it is found in the symphony hall, but God never meant for us to think of creation like our consumer culture. It is not a circus where we sit in the stands and watch. We do not take our ticket stubs, pin them up on our walls, and say good night, no. Creation calls us to action. Creation is to be nine and have words in your chest like nervous hummingbirds trapped in the prison of your ribcage, bursting out of every pore in your body, and maybe for you. It isn't stories or poems, but paintings or watching the eagles fly or the love you have for your children. 
Any feeling like explosions is just the creative in you digging its way out from beneath the darkness, praying from the bottom of its heart to be free. So please, do not make your heart a birdcage for your creativity and imagination. God created this world after all. How foolish we would be to deny our own place in it. Small as pinky fingers or stalks of grass, though we may be. We have stardust in our bones and life from the bottom of our feet. Isaiah says that God calls the stars by name and God does the same for us. So shouldn't we start living up to our own names already? Creation is not just around us. It is inside us begging us to let it run wild like the stallion on the hillside, to sing like the coyote in the night or the baby in the cradle. So sing loudly, love, dance loudly, live creation loudly, as though you were made of stardust, as though God used their hands to mold you and called you by name because you are, because God did. Because God did. Amen. Amen. Sacred the body God has created. Temple of spirit that dwells deep inside. Cherish each person, nurture creation. Treat flesh as holy that love may abide. Bodies are very sizes, pale full of color, both fragile and strong. Holy the difference, gift of the maker, so let us honor each story and song. Holies, God ever loving, make us your temples and dwell all we do. May we be careful, tender and caring, so may our Let us pray. Now we pray as we always pray. Make well the ill. Make calm the anxious. Lift the hearts of the grieving. Give rest to the weary. Bless us with your healing presence. Make us hungry for justice. Strengthen our faith and increase our love for others especially those we find it most difficult to love. Let us pray together then as spirit-born children of God, author of love and womb of life, who is in heaven and within us, we call upon your names. Your wisdom come. Your will be done in all the spaces in which you dwell. Give us each day sustenance and perseverance. Remind us of our limits as we give grace to the limits of others. Separate us from the temptation of empire 
and deliver us into community. For you are the dwelling place within us, the empowerment around us, and the celebration among us, now and forever. Amen. Okay, good morning, friends. Take two. Oh, we are so joyful and grateful as we welcome our Stella Joy Ramsey as a child of God. You are a child of God. I am a child of God, no matter what the world may say. Okay, beyond Sunday morning, Monday morning, people are busy in the kitchen making sack lunches each and every week. So we appreciate your continued prayer for the people in our community that we serve and the helpful, busy hands downstairs each Monday. Our Tuesday, 4 p.m. afternoon theology discussions with Pastor Bill Peck on Zoom, and you will find that connection in the connector and that's a great opportunity for some lively discussion for sharing of thoughts and listening to others our bible study weekly um, people are individually studying because their preference is to meet in person so that being on hold for a bit uh, we're doing our own individual bible study for now Sunday mornings at 9 a.m., we continue with the adult Sunday school with Don Gibbard, and that also is on Zoom. I do want to make certain that I thank each and every one of you for your prayers and your contributions to UMCOR for our disaster relief across the United States and across our world. And also, Locally, thank you to those who have been helping with the downstairs construction project. That is moving along and progress is being made. So remember that each of us, we are a child of God. We are united in love with a common purpose, the purpose of loving God and loving our neighbor and growing and sharing in God's love for the transformation of the world. Let's continue to honor one another, each story, each song. Be careful, tender, and caring. Have a wonderful week. I invite you to rise in body and or spirit for our sending hymn, Spirit, Spirit of Gentleness. Spirit, Spirit of gentleness, flow through the wilderness, calling and free. Spirit, Spirit of restlessness, stir me from blessedness. You called to the deep, then you coaxed 
up the mountains from the valleys of sleep and over the eons you call to each thing wake from your slumbers and rise on your powerful even in your helplessness move forward this week and the rest of time knowing how much power god gives you go in peace